Hello and welcome to the Trade Ideas Market Recap for Tuesday, March the 3rd. My name is Barry Anderson. I'm the moderator of the trading room. This is the address to get in and you can log in with your Facebook or your Twitter account. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, it was a pretty active day for me in the room. Uh, I'm only going to go over two trades. Uh, the other ones that I'm not going to go over, they were kind of small. Uh, a couple little losses, a couple little gains, but I do want to talk about a couple of trades that I took. And the first one is Leaf. Now, Leaf is, uh, you can, here's where it closed yesterday. And Leaf is, uh, is one of those ones which is usually a very, very light trader. Uh, but you can see that we've already done four and a half million shares today. And in the pre-market, here's here, this big candle here is where the market opened. Okay, so here's 930. So here's the pre-market activity. And basically uh, what happened is that uh, Leaf uh, bought a subsidiary, I think of Citicorp, or Citibank. And, you know, and it just completely took off. I mean, here's where it uh, closed yesterday at 3808. And so... On that news, it uh, it leaped up to $44. Now, yesterday, um, I jokingly said that uh, what we should be doing is buying uh, in any company that does the acquiring, we should be buying, and no matter what. You know, typically, uh, when I first started trading, when a company got acquired, of course, the, the acquired company would always, usually it's being acquired at a premium. So, of course, it would go up. But the company that was doing the acquiring would usually go down because they ha have to offer uh, stock, uh, you know, or even if they have to come up with cash, uh, shareholders didn't like that short term. So, typically, the acquiring company would always go down. But, I have, but what we've seen over the last... You know, and I don't even know now, but maybe six months to a year, is that the companies that are doing the acquiring are just skyrocketing also. And so, for instance, yesterday, NXPI was a perfect example. It acquired FSL, and NXPI just took off, uh, and it just kept going virtually all day. So, again, I jokingly said, listen, guys, we should be buying these acquiring companies. Now, this is not quite the same. It's not that Leaf, of course, didn't acquire Citicorp, but... Uh, they did acquire a subsidiary of them. So I was bound and determined to, uh, to somehow get into this trade. Now, look, here it is at 44 and it just zoomed up. Now, I, this is all in the pre-market and I, wasn't, I was not going to touch it in the pre-market. And also the, the spread was really, really tough. I mean, the, the, you know, at certain points it was at least a dollar. But right here, it's hard to see, but this is $50 right, right there. And I decided, you see how it, it popped up first and then it came back down, and I decided to take the trade right here at $50.19, posted it in the room, and I quickly got out of the trade at uh, half of it for $51.60, and the other half right here at $50.40, and it's really done... Excuse me. It's really done nothing since then. So it wasn't one of those that would uh, keep that uh, that kept going, but you know it's a little bit different. It didn't it didn't take over another public company. It just bought a subsidiary of one. But nonetheless, I think that you really have to what we really have to watch these mergers and acquisitions and 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 uh, and zero in on the company that is doing the acquiring. I mean, this was just a terrific trade. Now, admittedly, I didn't take a lot of shares. There was no way I could because it was very very uh, um, spready and up and down. But, uh, you know, look, I was really happy to take this trade, obviously. I mean, uh, from $50.19 to $51.60. So, you know, we're talking almost, uh, we're talking $1.41 on that, uh, that, uh, that point. So, uh, a great first trade, you know, uh, we're talking about probably in the first 5, 10, ten minutes and I'm, I'm gone. Uh, let's see, this is 15 minutes right there. So, in the first 15 minutes, I'm out of this trade. Now, the next one was OREX, uh, or Rexagen. I think they've got some kind of a diet pill. Now, one of our traders in the room, Christ Christopher, uh, Chris, <laughs> he was all over this early. And I have to admit, I wasn't paying that much attention to it. I was probably doing other things. I obviously should have been because this would have been a great place right here to get in at 741 on this little pullback here. But um, I did... I, as I said to the room, I couldn't stand it anymore. And I, I decided to take the trade. And this certainly is not trading 101. Nobody, nobody will ever tell you to uh, chase uh, a stock like I did here. But it just seemed like it had so much momentum behind it. You know, here's the volume, the volume, the volume on this bar. 
Uh, it just looked like it had so much momentum. It popped through $8 so quickly. So I decided to take the trade at $8.22. I immediately got out uh, some at $8.43. And again, if you watch my videos, you know that I, that's what I, t I like to do is I like to take some profit fairly early because look what happened here. I actually said in the room that I would stop myself out probably right where I bought it, which it was 822. And look what happened. It came right down there. In fact, it just came just a little bit below it. But because I'd already taken some profit, I already taken some profit right here. Um, I decided to hang in there just a little bit longer just to see whether or not it, it uh, still had some momentum. And uh, sure enough, it did because it, it held us. It held basically right where I bought it. And then it popped uh, two successive bars. Uh, it, it looked like it was going to get stuck at, uh, at, at $9. But then it, it popped through and I sold some more at $9.27. Uh, for a dollar four on the uh, sorry a dollar five on the uh, on that portion and then as it came back down through uh, nine dollars I sold the rest at 892 certainly have to watch this one um, you know it's it's uh, looks like it's found some decent support at uh, 811 and definitely have to keep watching this one let's take a look at what the daily is on it to see if it's going to make my list um, I'm going to go to a weekly and see what sort of resistance there is. And, you know, nothing. I mean, this is, this is going to have, yeah, I mean, maybe a little, here's some spikes up here uh, on the monthly, but you know, I think it's got something to do with diet pills and, you know, America loves diets, uh, or <laughs> any way they can lose weight without having to work out. So, uh, this definitely has to be watched tomorrow also. And, um, but a, a tremendous trade. Now, one that I'm thinking about, let's see what's happening here. Um, this is Hilton, uh, Hilton worldwide holdings. This was a, um, an alert on my new or my lifetime high. And I'm just kind of watching it. It's really doing nothing, but the market has another 50 minutes left in it. And I think if it broke through here, uh, I think I will take the trade. But uh, I was kind of hoping that uh, in doing this live, that it would break through and I would take the trade. But, uh, you know, I'm going to have to wait and see. Certainly, it's holding uh, 29. It'll probably go on my list also. Uh, you know, I love the ones that, uh, that break through and maybe just hang around just above the whole number. Uh, the reason I, I like that is because then we don't tomorrow we don't have to ha we don't have the whole number to uh, to worry about and it just makes it a lot easier to uh, to take a trade when you know if the trade is down here at 2889 uh, you know you always have to worry that it's going to uh, uh, be held up by that whole number but when it's sitting here and it's not too far away from the whole number then and obviously because it's a, a lifetime high there's uh, you know there's blue sky ahead of it there's nothing technically which is going to stop this stock this is this is one that really i think you have to watch tomorrow all right. Uh, again, an exciting day in the room. There were other great trades made by other traders. I, I can't remember them. There were so many of them, but uh, some really good traders in the room. So I encourage you, if you haven't, if, if you're just sort of watching these videos and you're you're not joining in uh, and you and you, you know, and you are a day trader, especially uh, you don't have to participate as such. You don't have to worry about posting. Just come on in the room, see what we're doing. Uh, you know, if you have a question about trade ideas itself, uh, and, and if I have the time, I will certainly try to help you. Uh, I don't mind sharing some of my strategies. Uh, so, you know, come on in the room and uh, hopefully we can educate you a little bit about what trade ideas is all about. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just bring back the cover page. And again, here's how to get into the room and I hope to see you in the trading room tomorrow.